Hello everyone, this is Jarek with Allegedly Sober and uh, I'm just kind of sitting around today gotten to talk with one of my roommates a little bit about psychedelics and kind of how we both see them and uh, got me thinking so I decided that I would just start recording and uh, share my perspective on psychedelics. So one of the things that interests me the most about psychedelics is our symbiotic relationship with plants that has developed over the past I mean I don't even know hundreds of thousands perhaps millions of years as uh, we've been evolving as a species and along with that uh, the plants have been evolving as well and kind of uh, kind of hand in hand with each other I mean a lot of the uh, a lot of the plants that do well and have are still doing well to this day are plants that we have a need for and have a use for. Uh, so, so in kind of a strange way, it's almost like they uh, get an evolutionary bonus just because they're useful to us. But then there's still uh, all sorts of plants and everything that's growing in, in the jungles that just grow without any sort of human uh, influence. And I'm, I'm glad that all that's still going on and it's great that there's... we have the plants that we still have, uh, you know, because we need them to produce oxygen uh, through photosynthesis and to get rid of our carbon monoxide, which we happen to output. So you can already, you can already see kind of a loop that happens with, with plants and humans. We exhale what they need and they essentially exhale what we need um, and that that creates an interesting relationship between the two of us. And one of the one of the main theories I don't I don't know if this is a main theory one of the most interesting theories to, that I've heard about how humans' brains have gotten so large and so um, powerful I want to say is from the use of psychedelics. Um, hundreds of thousands of years ago from very early humans perhaps even you know they would mo look more like monkeys um, they started ingesting plants like uh, like psilocybin mushrooms uh, ibogaine uh, all sorts of cactuses and, and things of that nature and who knows may maybe even plants that don't even exist today just any sort of plant that has this psychoactive effect when ingested and a psychoactive effect, yes, but also an effect on the consciousness, which is hard to scientifically test, I guess you could say, but very easy to notice uh, upon ingesting the chemical. Very easy to confirm that your consciousness is being affected by, uh, by the plant. And I, I find this uh, theory very easy to believe just because uh, you can feel the ex your your consciousness and your mind and uh, everything expanding and finding new things that you never considered before when you're on psychedelics. And not to mention the crazy uh, fractal art that you see uh, when you're on psychedelics. A lot of the time they're referred to as hallucinations. For me, I've never really had a hallucination that was something popping up that it wasn't supposed to be there. I feel like a lot of people, when they hear hallucination, they think that something is there that is not supposed to be there. And if that's the case, then how can you trust anything you see? So a hallucination sounds kind of scary when you put it that way. But for me, the hallucinations that I experience are everything is the same, essentially, but it's like you you have never seen it before and there's patterns within those things that may not even be there or you may have never noticed them before and those patterns can be em emphasized and distorted kind of and uh now, now that i think about it um if you look at the way that plants grow their leaves and everything 
there's very interesting patterns that they always follow. It's if you really observe a plant, it's almost difficult to believe the the math that they must be using to develop themselves in such a way. You know, it's like very advanced architecture, and very efficient architecture. I feel like that's that's the key word. It's very efficient. It doesn't waste any space. It uses everything that it has in the most efficient way possible. And that's because it follows the, you know, essentially the golden ratio or things um, pertaining to the golden ratio, which is just a uh, perfect balance, creates a perfect balance. And I feel like that um, ties in with the, the visuals that you have when you're on psychedelics. I feel like the golden ratio and fractals, if you know, if you know what fractals are, they're basically repeating patterns that can be zoomed in infinitely and zoomed out infinitely. And the same pattern is being used to create um, all sorts of different images. So I, I can see why when you ingest these, uh, especially plant-based psychedelics, why it could alter your vision a little bit to, to see more of this, this fractal pattern type vision because that's kind of what the plants use. That's kind of, and, and this is all, this is all theory at this point, but that's kind of the way the plants work. So they're almost communicating with us in their own language. So I basically, I think, uh, and it's very hard to say exactly the, what the purpose of these uh, especially plant-based psychedelics would are what they are but i do feel like they have a beneficial use for us as humans and for the entire world and i think that's why kind of the plants are giving them to us i mean the plants give us all sorts of things they give us i mean they're the the base of so many things that we have in our life as far as materials you get from plants, but even something as simple as a fruit. I mean, have you ever thought about why there is a fruit? Why, why would a plant want to spend its energy making something for us to eat? I mean, we're not, why does it even care about us? And I, I've heard some theories to that as like, uh, maybe an animal will come by and, and eat the fruit and then they poop out the seeds and now it's been like fertilized or or something like that, but even that, you it's a very symbiotic relationship. It's offering a gift to us, you know, and like when we just eat it and then the plant also get what gets what it wants. Very interesting relationship there. And uh, all right, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is kind of from my perspective, the, the three main ways that a trip can go, three different types of trip you can have kind of and there's obviously infinite variants that can go in into this but this is just kind of my uh perspective so things that i've realized on it so the first way is one that i've experienced several times now and it's basically when you are told or you become aware of the fact that you should be kicking more ass in life. You should be trying harder and you're being kind of lazy and you need to move some things around, some priorities around, exert some more energy and uh, do the right thing essentially. I've had a couple trips where that has clearly been the main theme uh, of the trip and while you're on the trip, it's very obvious extremely obvious what you need to be doing and I don't know if you can put into words as to why you need to be doing it but you you know you need to be doing it and you know that it's going to be worth it when you do it so you leave the trip with like oh duh I just need to be doing this I just need to be eating right well, I need to cut out that donut on the way to work I need to like stop drinking coffee switch it to something else healthier just these small little decisions that you can do every day they seem so obvious uh, that once you stop doing them, that the benefit will totally be worth it. 
Because that's that's the that's the thing for me is I, a lot of times I question like, you know, what what's the point of doing it? Why is it even worth doing it? You know, is it even worth putting my energy into you know not eating the not eating the donut? Because it's, it's obviously harder to not eat it than to eat it. And so I question I question whether it all is going to be worth it. You know, but. I mean, if you think about it, it's obviously worth it. We just, our ego gets in the way and we don't want to do it. And we think that we can be happy just by being comfortable. And we think that that's enough. And it never is. And that's why we are constantly having to change. We're either comfortable where we're at. And we're slowly realizing that it's not becoming that comfortable anymore. And something else needs to change. Or we're in a constant state of change. Uh, facing, you know, the uncomfortableness of every day as it comes and taking it head on. All right. So the second way that a trip can go, or a trip will have elements of this, is if you are kicking ass in life, if you are doing really well, and then you decide to have a trip, um, a lot of the times you are rewarded with these flow states would probably be the best way to describe them. You're rewarded with these flow states and the, the, these flow states are the most euphoric thing that, I mean, not that, not that you can imagine, but they're just very pleasing on a deep level. There's, they're satisfying on a deep level down to your, down to your core, not just on like a, the level of eating a cheeseburger or something. It's a completely different level of satisfaction. It's the satisfaction you get when um, you know you're on the right track and you just, you know you're doing everything right. And these flow states come out in many different ways, sometimes through flow arts, like uh, doing light shows or spinning, spinning staff or spinning poi or dancing, um, anything, anything physical, ch you know, challenging. Um, a lot of the times I see that come out in a uh, communication form. You see people uh, get into these very deep conversations um, and sometimes both sides are flowing back and forth so perfectly that it's like there's no effort being put in, in a sense. Um, everything's just working the way it should be. And then sometimes there's one person that's in the flow and another person that isn't in the flow and that one person will their the part of their flow is saying things that the other person needs to hear or doing things that the other person needs to see like uh kind of go to one of the sayings my my buddy mike always says uh you can't show someone the way you can't like force them to the right way you can't you can't even really describe it if you think about it but you can be living the way and through your living uh you can got you can point them in the right direction that's the best way all, all you can do is just just point at point at the right direction and different people need different things in order for that in order for them to see that so sometimes it's the way you move or sometimes it's give, giving a light show that can show someone what they need to see or sometimes it's saying the right words and because I think what it really comes down to is we all know what we need to be doing and what we should be doing deep down somewhere covered into a covered up in 10 20 30 different layers of ego to the point where you if you ask yourself you might not even be able to say it because you have tricked yourself so much but somewhere deep down there, you know what you should be doing. And when you're, I feel like this is, this is what happens to me at least when you're on, when you're on psychedelics, you, you're looking for someone to say what you need to do. You're looking for a sign so much because like if, if you've been rejecting this thing that you, you know, you should be doing, it's, it, you, you know, it's there. It's, it wants to come out. And it's looking, it's looking for an excuse to come out, really. So basically anything anyone says or anything anyone does, you're almost subconsciously looking to find meaning in it. 
you're trying to find a meaning in there that t that's telling you that it's all worth it. That's that's the meaning that we want to find. And sometimes, uh, sometimes on on an intense trip, I'll my mind is blown because I can't imagine how that person knows to say what they're saying. Like, how do they know that I need to hear that? And I, th I think a part of that is, is I know what I need to hear. So I'm trying to find what I need to hear in what they're saying. I think that's, that's kind of where that, that trippiness comes from. But, uh, all right. So the third way a trip can end or, or a trip can go, and this is, I believe kind of how most bad trips go is when you're not kicking ass in life. And you're also not accepting the message of the psychedelic. So basically, you know, a lot of times people will take these drugs as uh, an escape of some kind, as just like a, just a party drug or something. And so if you're in that mindset, then there's a good chance you're probably not doing what you should be doing in life anyway, uh, you know, for, for a lot of people. Um, and so they'll start getting into this trip and they, it'll start to, you know, that, that feeling will start to come up that something is wrong or something needs to change and they don't want it. They don't want to have to do anything like that. They don't want to have to change. And the ego has been probably layered on a little, a little deep so they can't get through to that deepest layer of of the truth that they, they they have so much of themselves and their them their ego in the way that they can't see the the simple message of all you got to do is start kicking ass that's all you got to do that's all you want to do really and and i i have had uh i wouldn't say full-on experiences of this but brief kind of uh moments of this during my trip where i feel like i have life kind of figured out i've got it figured out to where like you know i don't need to be in that state of constant change anymore i i figured out the state to be in where everything kind of works out and there is no state like that there is no state where you don't need to change every the state is a state of constant change. The state that you want to be in is a state of constant change because that's the state that the universe is in. That's the state that every molecule and every little thing is, is in. So if you want to be in harmony with everything else in the universe, then you need to also be in that state of constant change. Even though our ego is always trying to convince us or, or trying to help us find or lead us to a state of comfort rather than a, a state of constant change because constant change is a constant resistance you know like if you picture if you picture a circle a circle is is in a loop basically it just it loops around and you go around and you came back just where you were over and over but a spiral never goes back to the same spot again it's constantly expanding and going out another another set each arm is out farther than the arm the previous arm before that and in order to to make that happen there has to be a slight change there there's a, a state of constant change in the way that the the line is moving to where it's it causes it to constantly expand so if you look at that that example then you see that you have to face this resistance and create this resistance in your life in order to be in, in a constant state of change and to be truly satisfied with life. And there's, there's, way, there's ways to look at this that makes it a lot easier. I mean, first and foremost, if you can realize that every little thing you do is worth it. Um, it's a very, it's a very good feeling because, like for me, I relate it to video games because it's what I know. It's like being in that video game where 
everything you do, you're gaining experience from. Every little action you do, you gain experience. You kill a monster here, you gain some experience, you gain a level, and then because you now gain the level, it's you can go get more experience faster. And now while you're doing that, you're also gaining up your money, every, and, you know, and then once you have all this money, you can go spend it on things. And it's like, it's just such like a beautiful system built exactly the way that we want it to. But sometimes we have a hard time seeing that, that what we really want is the challenge. We want to have to face the challenge every day and to overcome it and to gain some motherfucking experience points. That's what I'm after. But also comparing it to a video game is like kind of taking it down a notch because there's always a point in a video game where it's like not worth it anymore. It doesn't make sense to go keep getting experience because you're already the highest level. Or it doesn't make sense to go keep getting more money or, you know, pick up loot from some of the lower level enemies because it's not going to give you thing of value anymore. And in that way, it's not like a video game because this is a perfect infinite video game the video games that we've played on computer and Xbox and things, they are man-made and finite. But, you know, this, what's happening right now in front of us, life, it's perfect and it's infinite in every possible direction. So, no, whatever effort you want to put in, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be rewarded in some way. Like, essentially karma. But also you have to put in the effort of thinking where do you want to put effort because you can't just start putting effort into everything in your life because if you think about it that's almost easier than sitting down and thinking what do I even want to put effort into the first place so I think uh, that's that's kind of one of the last ways that a trip can go and I think the longer that you reject the this message that you need to be trying harder in your life you need to be doing what's right and doing what you know you're supposed to be doing uh creating your dream reality um then your trip can just continue to go on badly and it can end badly and then you may never want to even go back to it again and it could it could honestly leave it could have a negative impact i could see i could see psychedelics having a negative impact on someone personally for me, I don't think it has ever had any sort of negative impact because when the trips that I've had that I've been uncomfortable in, uh, first of all, nothing crazy has ever really happened. I've never done anything crazy, although I've known people who have done crazy things. But for me, nothing really crazy that would affect my life has ever happened. But also when the trip is done, I get some sort of value of it just because of how uncomfortable it was you know almost like i just climbed a goddamn mountain or something it was it was challenging and now you know some sense i feel like i now that i overcame that i it gives me more will to overcome other things so i could see uh psychedelics having a negative impact on someone but for me it never has even if the trip has been more towards the bad trip side it still has not been negative. <clears throat> yeah, so I think I'll just end it there. Um, I just I just want to end with saying uh, that, interestingly enough, and as hard as it is to believe, even for me, in, even for my own self to believe, these things genuinely have helped. Genuinely have helped my life. And maybe there's certain people out there who don't need this kind of help. That's, that's very possible that there's people out there that have already got it figured out enough that they don't need this uh, mind-altering experience in order to see where they need to go or what they need to do. But for me, it has helped. Uh, I know a lot of people that it has helped, and I see very clearly and very easily how it could help society um i heard i heard a quote from someone a while ago saying uh from somebody who's obviously into psychedelics um said he he couldn't believe the fact that 
all of our leaders, pretty much all of our leaders, our president, everyone in government has never even experienced these things because it, that's totally out of that realm. You know, like if, if, if somebody ever found out you did LSD and then you were trying to run for president, it wouldn't, wouldn't work over well. So essentially none of them have even experienced this mindset and it, it, uh, it, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy because of how much that it has allowed me to see. And this guy who I heard this quote from, um, related them to like, they're basically children in a world full of adults and, and elderly people. Like the, those people who have never even, uh, had the, had an experience like this. And you know, they're, they're almost like children in, in a world full of adults. They haven't seen beyond this perspective because in life we have this one continuous consciousness but when you take these things these chemicals and these uh these living things these plants um they change that consciousness to another state of consciousness and even if you didn't see anything in that new state of consciousness. You now realize that there, your consciousness can be in different states. It's it, there's not just this one state of consciousness and realizing that helps you to realize get, it helps you get a little bit closer to in, infinite, a little bit closer to infinity because infinity in, from my uh, perspective cannot be perceived or it can't fully be understood because we are not built to understand that we don't have the means to understand infinite even though we can comprehend from one to infinite we can't even comprehend a fourth dimension and that's only to four but yet we know that there is this fourth dimension and I mean even science scientists and physicists would talk about the fourth dimension all the time we know that there's these things that we cannot comprehend and seeing them and seeing the that your consciousness can change so drastically helps you to see that that everything indeed is infinite in a way that we cannot even hope to ever comprehend all right that's it for me. I'm signing off. It was great getting my perspective out there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, still, anybody who wants to get on the podcast, feel free. We're down to have you. We can talk about uh, any topics you want, really. Anything anyone anyone's interested in. Uh, as long as we can go deep on it and you don't mind us questioning. Then, yeah, get on the show. All right, see you guys later.